Welcome to Knicks.com. Jonah Ballo here with JP Takoto, and uh, we're talking a little Knicks basketball as now you join this team after Summer League. Right. What were some of the lessons you learned with the team there in Orlando? Uh, definitely learned uh, the triangle offense, yeah. or what we tried to learn. Yeah. <laughs> it was so quick. <laughs> we, uh, you know, I had a few days to you know jump into the offense, but um, uh, after the first two games, uh, we pretty much had it under control after that. And yeah, you got could, it rolling. You could see sort of the momentum shifts in Orlando, where you guys started to get it clicking and the offense started to roll a bit. Yeah, Is that yeah. a transition when you have an offense like that to figure everything out and then you stop thinking as much? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I mean, we had so many options off of it that you know guys were, including myself, were just getting a little confused with you know where we're getting our shots at and you know offensively where we're supposed to play. Defensively, we were all, we were all okay. We we're all good. How would you summarize your NBA career so far? A couple chances with some NBA teams now with this opportunity with the Knicks, yeah. uh, continuing to fight for spots and, and, and showing your worth. Obviously, you have a lot of skills there. What what have you learned so far with the different options and opportunities you've had with teams? Um, with all the different options and opportunities, uh, whether it be the NBA with Philly, yeah. uh, that's where I started, or the D League with OKC, which was great. Yeah. Um, and now with the New York Knicks, which is even better. Um, <laughs> just you know, seeing where I fit in, seeing what the team needs from me. And then, you know, giving that to them in the best of, in, of my ability. And, uh, you know, here with the Knicks, I have a great opportunity to be that defensive stopper that they call on off, off the bench. And, uh, you know, I'm going to take a full advantage of that and that opportunity this year. Is that sometimes what you have to do from um, a mindset is realize what your skills are and hone that in and say, just like you said, off the bench, defense, and figure out kind of what they're looking for and tailor made your game. Even though, you know, you can do a lot of things on offense. Right. We've seen that in college. Right. And, and really finding your niche in the NBA. Yeah, a lot of guys, including myself, coming into the league, you know, thought they had to be something that you really don't have to be. And yeah. I, I thought I had to score the ball more, prove that, you know, I've been working on my offensive game. Um, while you need to do that a little bit, um, you know, teams are actually looking for something more specific, and, you know, as in me, a defensive stopper, guy who rebounds, gets out on the break, runs the floor, finishes at the rim when, when they need to. Um, you know, they're not looking for me to, you know, come down, pull up from three point. <laughs> you got to number seven clock. to do that, right? <laughs> right, right. We got Melo, you know. So, um, you know, for, for me, for, you know, it's just more of realizing who I am as a basketball player and what the team needs from me at that point in time. I always find it fascinating when you talk to guys who had success at college at the level that you did and the type of college games you were involved in, yeah. and then that next level and what that feels like. I mean, it, can you describe what it feels like to take that next step and to play against some of the athletes? in the league? Um, definitely, you know, watching guys in the NBA while I was playing in college and now playing alongside them or playing against them, um, whether it be in pickup with Melo mm -hmm. or, you know, just watching Kevin Durant and you at Team USA and, you know, telling yourself, hey, you may, off of a switch, you may be guarding him. So um, it's kind of surreal at the same time, but, you know, once you're out there on the floor, you know, how I look at it is, you know, those guys sweat just like me. Um, we're all on the same floor. I got to guard me. They got to guard me. I got to guard them as well. So, so you're uh, saying because kind of I sweat battle. too that I could be yeah, out there with you guys. Definitely. I mean, <laughs> it's not, <laughs> not that in, little. In, co <laughs> in college, in college, you're more looking at them, you know, as you know, they are superstars sure. yeah. and kind of like, you know, it could be a chance I could be out there with them. It couldn't be. But, you know, once you're out there with them, it's like you can't be afraid of them. That's when you yeah. know, they capitalize any guy, whether it be Kevin Durant or someone like me. Um, we look for fear, you know, definitely offensively, defensively. If a guy is scared to go at us, you know, we're going to attack. So, I, you know, when I say, you know, they sweat just like me, you know, we're all men out there playing the same game. There's only one ball, you know, got to go at each other. Yeah, I talked to Ron about that a little bit, the mindset. I mean, obviously, it's a team situation when you're going to go to West Point, mm -hmm. trying to achieve one goal as a group. But definitely. individually, I would imagine you have to sort of have that, you know, predator sort of feeling about going out there and getting your work done and showcasing what it is that you can bring to this team. Definitely, definitely. It, you know, it's not about, you know, attacking your teammates, you know, or alienating anybody or, you know, trying to prove that I'm better than you type thing. But, um, you know, they're, they're looking for, you know, the best five guys at that point in time on the floor. And, you know, if you're out there playing tentative or scared or, you know, worried about another teammate's feelings, it might hold you back a little bit. Um, I learned that the hard way in Philadelphia. And, you know, while they're, you know, me and Melo may be guarding each other, you know, per se, but, uh, you know, it's not anything hard finished. He's going to go at me as hardest because that's what I expect. And I'm pretty sure he expects the same thing from me or anybody else guarding him at that point in time. All right. 
I have to talk about the dunking. Yeah, of course. Because <laughs> <Of course. laughs> that's one of your trademarks. <laughs> uh, you might be one of the best dunkers in the league, and I think you just need an opportunity to showcase your skills. Could a dunk contest be something in your future? Uh, definitely. I, I disappointed last year in a D League dunk contest. Uh, you know, came out, didn't, didn't do the dunks that I really wanted to, you know, finish. But um, I definitely have a lot more tricks up my sleeve. Uh, you know, dunking's always been a, a, a very, you know, easy thing that came to me. Um, but yeah, I do have a few tricks up my sleeve, so maybe, you know, this year I can Did get you hear out that, and break. Get this guy in the dunk contest. We're gonna see some stuff at training <laughs> yes. camp at preseason. Toe toe, New York Knicks number one. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite dunker of all time? Oh, easy, Vince Carter. Of course, you're uh, a little yeah, biased, yeah. aren't yeah. you? I mean, not even a little biased, even before then. Now, you know, Zach Levine, though, UNC. we got to talk about him in this conversation, Yeah, right? definitely, you yeah. know, back-to-back. Back. Um, you know, last year was definitely a great guy, a Aaron great Gordon dunk contest. Yeah. Aaron Gordon was right there with him. You know, he did some dunks that, that I personally never seen um, or just seen on a video game. <laughs> he's got so, that vertical bounce. Yeah, you know, he's got the he vertical bounce. Up. He's 6'8", six, 6'9", six, you know, bouncy, you know, he, emphatic dunks. So, I mean, you know, when, whenever you dunk it with power, yeah. it could be a two-hand dunk, one-hand dunk. You know, it definitely brings a little more to it. But he does it in a, in a very uh, graceful way, too. And, you know, he did the dunk where he jumped over the mascot, grabbed the ball here, you know, went under his legs. Yeah, it's so. one of those, like Vince did that, where he put his arm through the hoop. It's arm one of those, you, have to, you no. have to pause, and then everybody says, I want to see the replay, right, right, and figure right. out what he actually did. Right, and he was, you know, the first guy that I've seen that actually 360 the opposite way and windmill at the same time. Yeah. So in, in high school, I used to always try to do his dunks, and, you know, fortunately enough, my high school senior year, uh, I was in a dunk contest down in New Orleans, and uh, my the, the dunk that won me the championship, uh, was uh, I did a 360 the wrong way, his way, yep. and put it through my legs, the 360. Okay, so you uh, added a little bit to it, because he had the windmill, he right? Had the windmill, well, I mean, I'm pretty sure he's done all that before. <laughs> right. so. Do you have footage I'm not of this? I'm not going to take any credit from that one. Are we going to be able to get some footage of this? we got to track that down. Oh, I'm sure it's, it's, on, it's, on, it's on YouTube. Okay, yeah, definitely. we'll be putting it on our social channels, <laughs> we'll all right? We'll get that one. Yeah. Okay, well, we're excited. We're going to see some good dunks, highlights, and obviously, more importantly to the coaches out there, defense, yeah, I'm sure, right, is what we're going right, to work on. But it's a blast. We're going to be heading to West Point with you guys, so we'll catch up with you throughout out uh, the week there and awesome. exciting stuff man exciting looking forward to it all right there all right. he is jp dakota right here on nicks.com